Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am joined by a good friend, Sabine Poncelet. She's here for our part two uh, discussion today on animals and, and beyond. And so I'm excited to have you back. Uh, Sabine, welcome. Thank you, Sherry, and thanks again for the second time. I'm happy to be here again. My apologize for my voice today because I have a sore throat and a runny nose, but you can hear me, I'm sure. Yeah, you can understand yeah, we what I said. We appreciate your time, definitely. And, and your first uh, interview was so well received uh, by a lot of people and they were just blown away by the information that we both brought forward. And who doesn't wanna talk about animals? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more today. We're gonna talk about uh, reincarnation. We're gonna talk about animals as our spirit guides. And you know, some, sometimes they need a little bit of extra attention from us. And, and what, we're gonna give some tips today on um, how to communicate with your, with your animal. And uh, Sabine is gonna be doing a special light language activation at the end and that will be really special. So Sabine, let's talk about maybe before, just to get it going, what are some tips that you have for people that want to communicate with their pets? You know, what are the best ways to go about doing that? Put your mind on parking mode. That's a big word, I know, but I've noticed, you know, when I'm giving animal communication courses, the people who have the most difficulties are the ones who are highly stressed in general, the ones who are anxious and have a lot of difficulties to calm their mind. And the first things to be able to hear the thought of the animal, to receive images from them, it's calming your mind, being in a state where you feel relaxed. That's the most important things. Hmm. Yeah, I agree totally. I, whenever I teach anything, I always tell people to let go of expectations and just um, and, and just receive because, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but uh, people think that it's gotta be one particular way that they will receive guidance or communication or anything from their, from their pets. And it just doesn't work that way. Every animal has their unique way to relay some sort of a message, sometimes telepathically, sometimes visions, sometimes they'll do something really out of the ordinary to get your attention. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on how they communicate with us? Yeah, every animal is different. And the reason is because it's a soul. They are unique. Every soul is unique. And that's the reason why every animal will have a conversation with you in a total different way. Yeah, you can have four dogs at home, all the fours, even if it's four German Shepherds, nobody will discuss with you in the same way. They have their character, they have their personality. And yes, again, I'm insisting, it's a unique soul, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like us, we have our ways of communicating. They have their ways that they want to reveal what they have to say to us. And they also have mood swings and things just like us, you know, where maybe that particular day they don't really want to communicate with us or they don't have anything that they want to say. And so sometimes we have to respect their boundaries and what, when is appropriate for that. You know, what, what do you think about that? Oh, yes, I agree 100%. I had a case with a kitten who was ready to be put on sleep. This is a long story. I will make it very short for the audience today. And I remember that cat was on the camera. He was inside the cage at the vet. And the client told me, Sabine, I think it's too late. They will put him on sleep. And I'm like, OK, let me have a discussion. It was a four months kitten. I was myself not sure that I could get a proper conversation on his status. Do I want to die? Do I want to stay? That was the question. The kitten started to have a conversation on a very deep level for more than half an hour, explaining everything and say to her, please get me out of here. I want to live. I want to stay alive. I don't want to pass. It's not the moment for me. I came for you. And he explained in a very detailed way. But of course, he has been moved, he survived, nobody put him on sleep, he's in a very good health today. Then what she did after that, a few months later, she's coming back to me and she said, can you speak with my cat? And he was like, oh, I want to play. And
and he was seeing one things here, one things there, but like it, I would say not he didn't give interest, he was busy to play, like let me be a kitten. I had to say a very important message to tell you I want to stay alive. I said everything enough, now I'm a kitten, bye. It was, I'm making, you know, my version, he didn't say bye, let me a kitten, but the way how he was speaking, I was asking questions from the client and he was playing, he was answering halfway here, halfway there. And I was like, mm, okay. He was busy playing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, for, for those watching, not everybody can communicate consciously. All of us are communicating. Every single person watching this that has a dog or cat communicates with their pet, trust me. They do. They just, you just don't realize that you're communicating. They come through as your thoughts, you know, that you, you are, you're just doing it in a way that you're not aware of in the conscious level. But I, I think our pets really, um, they, they try their best to get our attention. But sometimes when we're in a low vibration and we're stressed or we're not, we're trying to make a decision and that those people were probably really uh, beside themselves trying to decide what to do that cat can be trying, could have been trying to tell them that. And then finally, when you came along, your day, he was like, Ooh, finally, someone's listening to me, you know, and, and that. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes we have to go off of feelings too. So if you don't, if you're that person watching this right now and you're like, I can't do that, what Sabine just said, we, we, you have to try to go off your instinct, your intuition and how you feel. Do you, when you sit with this cat and you hug them and hold them, are they, or do they, is that what they want? Do they want to, to cross over? Is it time? And I believe everybody watching this will get an answer. It may not always be the answer that you want, but you'll get an answer. But we tend to second guess that answer. And then we think, oh, it's not right. We're making it up. Um, but I, I think, Sabine, uh, tell me what you think. Because I've, I've taught many things over the years. I've taught adults how to do, um, you know, energy healing from connecting to their guides and angels, et cetera, to animal communication. And I believe connecting with the animals is the easiest than connecting with your spirit guides or even your angels because of the reason that they are able to lower their vibration to match are so much easier than spirit guides and the angelics and our galactic family because they're eager to communicate with us. Um, and so what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think the same. And they want to help also. They are waiting for us to make the first step. And from the moment we make the first step, they always answer and they make so much effort to help us to get the message. They're amazing for that. Yeah, and yes, you are right. It's easier to communicate with animals than the spirit guides or even people who passed away sometimes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Much easier. Yeah. And sometimes they'll communicate with their, with like uh, visuals. So you, you won't get, I think people think they're going to have a conversation like Dr. Doolittle, if, if, if anyone's ever seen that movie. And it was a great movie. It was funny, but it was, it, it's a misinterpretation of how animals communicate. And really, it comes to, through your thoughts, but also they'll send visuals. So you'll, they'll send you a picture. And, and, and many other things that we can interpret in different ways, but they don't, they're not going to sit there and have a dialogue back and forth with us. So I think when people release that expectation and say, oh, okay, it's not like that, then they realize the subtle cues that they get from their animal. Do you, do you teach uh, communication to any of your clients to help them? Yeah, yeah. I teach animal communication from the beginner to advanced yeah. And, you know, I want to say something about that. The way how they communicate, again, is very different from one animal to another because even me today, I will have some animals. My conversation will be with the client, your dog or your cat is showing me, showing me, showing me this or make me feel that or I sense this. All the, the consultation with the client will be about feeling and images. With others, I will say clearly, oh, your dog or your cat is telling me this, this, or your horse, especially with horse. Uh, they have the tendency to enter on a deeper level. And with horse, you can have not a full conversation like we have now because it's always on a different level. 
But uh, yeah, every animal is different, even in a way they show you images. Every image will be different for the same situation, for example. Exactly like humans are expressing themselves. Sorry, expressing with my nose block is a bit difficult today. <laughs> oh la la. You know, I I'm trying to speak normally, but it's really difficult. I have You're to doing make a great the job. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And you know, at the beginning for students who are learning animal communication, I have noticed everyone has a different way to receive. It's about the animal. Yes, some animal will go more in pictures than sensation, but it's also about you because some senses are already developed with one person that the other person didn't develop yet. It's still asleep. Then let's say my client A follow the cause and my client B follow the cause, both on the same level beginner, one will go faster than the other one. And the reason why is because one has developed already something that the person doesn't even know. And when we start the exercise, they're like, oh, oh my God, oh yeah, I received that. And they are even surprised that they get a message and the message is correct. That, that's the funny part of it when you start as a beginner. And again, at the beginning, I've noticed something. I don't know for you how it was with people when you speak with them, etc. But for me, I've noticed images are coming first for almost each and every one and sensation. And then thought, a dialogue, full sentence will come later on. Yeah. I agree with everything 100%. And I, I love that you mentioned that because we do have to kind of go off of our senses. And some of us are more auditory, some are visual, and our animals will recognize what our strengths are because they are connected to us. So they're going to go cater to our strengths the best that they can, of course. Not all, it doesn't always work that way, but they try their best. Mm -hmm. And yeah, visuals are the easiest, I think, for most people. But I do, I've had a lot of clients that just no matter what they do, they can't see. And that's okay because then their animal will probably, then they need to stop trying to see. And I tell them their animal's trying to, probably trying to get your attention another way. Maybe they're going through your thoughts. Um, and so we just have to be open to what, how we think we can receive. And that's a really important point, definitely. And everybody, we, everybody learns at their own speed and the way that they do it. And so we can't look at how someone else does it and try to replicate that because it's not gonna work that way, you know? So how Sabine does it may not be the way I do it or somebody else, but none of us are necessarily right or wrong. It's just our process is completely different. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other tips for people who are looking to get started? So we have release expectations, uh, recognize that you're, you have different senses and what you're tapping into. Well, um, obviously we talked about not being stressed. Um, what else? What else do, should, we, should we tell them? Meditation is helping a lot. Um, when we say relax the mind, relax the body, doing breathing exercise will help when your mind is really busy because some people are working in corporate and have crazy life and it's really difficult when you come back at home to calm down directly then the best way is start to do breath work this is very effective to align yourself and then you do a guided meditation to calm the mind and you will feel directly, you don't need to force at that moment. You are completely open to receive. And also setting the, the intention, being willing to receive the message. But being willing to receive anything. Don't say, okay, I want my dog telling me if he likes broccoli or not today. And it's not <laughs> working that way. <laughs> it's not working yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree with everything to what you said. And, you know, sometimes I think people get so wrapped up about creating this time frame that they communicate with their animal and they put too much pressure on themselves. And so what I always tell people is, first, I think people are getting our message so far. Work on yourself first, you know, because that's 
there, your animal's always going to be there waiting and, and willing to communicate. So you need to try your best to shift your awareness to then communicate with them in whatever way that looks like, but also uh, releasing expectation in, in, in any given moment that the message is going to come through at that time. Because for me, I, at least in the beginning, I, I would ask my pet a question and then I wouldn't get an answer for hours or I would be driving. And what they told, what they told me, the reason for that is I, you're so like eager you know, to get an answer that sometimes we pop ourselves out of the vibration where we can actually receive. But later on when we're walking, maybe walking them, um, taking them for a walk or doing the dishes or taking a shower, suddenly you're like, oh, I just got the answer. And then you think, oh, I'm making it up. But you, but they're actually able to connect with you in that moment because there's no time or space. Your animals don't even need to be with you when you receive the message. It could be, you know, the next day or you could be driving home from work which I think is really cool. What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's right. And you know, it's also, also happening when you are having a shower or taking a bath because you are relaxed. And when you gave the example, walking the dog, you are relaxed. Your mind is flying. When you make the dishes, many women, when they are doing dishes, their mind is going la, 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 you know? This is why we receive the message so easily because we are open. Our mind is relaxed. Yeah. You know, one thing that is working also very well is essential oil. I had one of my students who had really difficulties. You said uh, visualization is difficult for some people. With that person, it was only sensation, but very, very low level. That person was blocked on other level too and needed to do a lot of work to be able to open. And because in the class, that person was behind all others, everyone was progressing, accepted that one. I tried with essential oil. It was working amazingly well with that one. Instantly, she could open. And finally, she said, oh, I'm feeling relaxed now. With meditation, nothing was working with her. Only essential oil. Just to tell you, for some people, um, they have a different yeah. way. Yeah. Well, and you don't know what that way is until you try. Try different things. Exactly. Try essential mm -hmm. oils. Try playing music in the backgrounds that, that promote positive energy and relax you. 432 hertz, 528 hertz, something like that. Um, going into a meditation. What I used to do that worked quite well is I... I would wait till my pet was asleep because sometimes when they're active, they're consciously trying to connect with you. Um, and it's a little bit distracting for the person because their dog's panting or like, you know, wanting their tail wagged or whatever they're or pet. They want to be pet and it distracts the person because they're like, Oh, it's too many things happening. So if you wait till your dog or cat or bird or whatever is resting and relaxing, then you close your eyes, you can sit next to them and then visualize yourself meeting in, an, in a neutral space and an astral space and then see how you connect in that way. Because I think sometimes in, when they're in their waking state and they're moving around, embarking or excited, it, it's hard for us to receive messages in that way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something that is working well, I've tried many times with my client, is placing the animal in a ball of light. You just close your eyes you do a small meditation, it must be maybe one or two minutes, not more. And you visualize the animal in a ball of light. You visualize yourself in a ball of light. And then you can relay the message. Finally, when you do that meditation, it's not really important that you receive a message because it's working often in a way when you have issue with your animal or your animal is absorbing too much from you and you don't know how to deal with at the end of the day, then that ball of light will send unconditional love to your animal, but to you at the same time. And it will like, how can I say, I feel it as a sensation every time, but sometimes I cannot put the words on it. It will create like a vortex where both together you are merging. That's the right word merging together and then you set your intention this is something amazing even if you have issue to communicate and say okay i have difficulties to receive the message at that moment you set the intention 
and you say to your animal, please, can you help me? Because I don't know how I'm capable to receive, which way I can receive the message. I don't know which senses is open and which senses are still asleep. Can you help me? Because the animal knows. But when you do in that context, within the ball of light, I've noticed the result are like miracle. Even cats that couldn't get along, but well, kitten, it took a few months, but my client did every day. She was like committed with ball of light. She was putting both cats in a ball of light. And then she was entering in day ball of light and creating a big ball of light around everyone. And she was having conversation with both of them. Because I remember it was a female who was alone since many years. Difficult to accept the kitten even. And that kitten uh, was a three or four months old, something like that. But the, the female was a bit aggressive. And to help, she did that. It took three months. She did that every day. Finished. Then she sent me a video. I was like, wow. I said, only the ball of light? She said, yeah, only this. And I had a conversation with them. See? Intention is everything in healing. And even in animal uh, conversation and communication, everything is into the intention. Yeah. Yeah. I love this conversation, Sabine, because I, you and I are like, we resonate. Um, because <laughs> everything you say, I, I really truly feel, and I also do, and I love the ball of, of light and the intention all, always, and everything that we do is so important. And I think that's also why uh, people were so, um, our conversation last time was so well received because I think what we talked about with regard to our animals mirroring our emotional state and our kind of dis-ease within our body uh, really hit home for a lot of people. And I had a lot reach out to me after and say, thank you for talking about that because I understand now. And I want to reiterate that a little bit more because of its significance, you know, animals not only are animals going through their own ascension symptoms right now, but the shifting of the frequency of the planet, but environmental cues and so many things happening, they truly are because they are just evolved, amazing beings that have come here to help us right now. So they are willing, more than willing to help take on our illness so that we can heal more quickly. And people get really upset and they say, I don't want my animal to suffer. And I tell them repeatedly, this is, they're telling me that this is what they want to do for you. And I think that's important for us to reiterate that right now, because it's happening to so many people. Our animals are taking on things for us because they're able to um, transmute the energy so much faster, but also there's a downside to it in, in our human mind right now, where some of them actually will choose to uh, leave the earth plane with that illness because they've saved their owner from something horrible like cancer um, or something like that. And that is why they came in. That was the whole reason. And we look at it as, oh my God, I killed my animal. But really they came in to do that for you, for us. That's what they are here to do. And so mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. Do you have any examples of any clients that you've worked with recently or in the past where they've had something like that? I have, unfortunately, many. Um, some, it ended up in a good way. Some others, the animal died. And the third category, I would say, the client never has been able to do the work to change and took another animal and the other animal developed the same disease. This is, unfortunately, a reality. And I want to say to all the people that are watching now, don't feel guilty. Because I still have many cases where people are crying and say, oh, Sabine, what you are telling me now, I knew, but I didn't want to see it. And now I don't know what to do. It's my fault. And when you say it's my fault and you feel guilty, you add even more on you. And then your animal is coming from the back and taking more from you then you go in a spiral and it's never ending. This is why I say always to everyone, don't feel guilty. That's not your fault. You never send a message to your dog, your cat, your horse, say, hey, take my trouble, take my disease, uh, serve as a trash bin. No, never you had this intention. We have to be realistic. That's the animal who came here with a mission. They sacrificed themselves somehow by 
landing here on Earth, incarnating into a cat dog body because it's a soul. We see them as animal. Oh, little cat, little dog, la la la. Uh, sometimes I speak with my big mama here. I had one day the shock of my life when she said, I know you from ta ta ta. I was like, <laughs> okay, believe me, it's me. I have the experience, but when it's coming to you, is your cat telling you that? Say, ah, yeah. And she said to me, don't look at me as a cat because for the moment you look at me as a cat. When you will be able to look at me differently, I will reveal to you much more. This happened one year ago. And just to continue with people, please put the guilt on the side or work on yourself to release the guilt. This is so important. Guilt is a very, very heavy energy, very low vibration. That's the lowest I know, I would say. And the animal feeling that energy will come to you and take even more to help you to cope with the guilt situation. This is what it's important to understand. And again, it's not your fault that your animal has taken the energy from you. But now you have a responsibility is to work on yourself. This is your responsibility. Yes, you are not in fault. That's not your fault. But from the moment you know and you are aware, that's the moment when you need to really be committed and work seriously on your condition. On the emotional, mental, physical and spiritual level that your animal will take on the light from you. When you will be able to hold in a flight in your own vessel, because your body is a vessel, your animal will just take the light from you, nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, we don't want to take their sacrifice or them volunteering to come in to guide us and then just throw all that away and then just build that back up within our body of all those negative emotions and vibrations. And then, which could brings me to my next point is sometimes they'll come right back and, and it's the same soul the same fractal of light that comes in and said, all right, well, I guess we're going to have to do this again. And they'll come in back, back into your life. And I know there are a lot of um, psychics out there, those, um, pet psychics. I've spoken to many of them who don't believe in reincarnation. Um, I certainly do. And, but I want to get your opinion about um, reincarnation and the, their ability to come back in many forms. And um, have you seen that with a lot of your clients or your own pets? Yeah, uh, my own daughter is the first. Uh, myself, I've been shocked. I was not expecting that. I always believed in reincarnation because I don't communicate only with pet. Then I see people who passed away and uh, I, I saw many things with time. Also now they have some studies that has been published from Harvard University that are proving the consciousness survive after the body die. Then if Harvard University start to speak about this, then <laughs> no comment, I would say, I said enough. Now regarding the animal reincarnation, if humans are reincarnating and today is proven, why animal can't? That's the question, why? Because it's still a soul who choose a different body for a different experience. For example, in my incarnation today, it's because I've done life between life to learn that, I discovered that I even choose my physical attribute. And I wanted to be a woman because I had to learn certain things that were very specific that I couldn't learn if I was into a man body. That's the main point. Here they choose a cat, a dog, a horse body because they want to not really learn. They learn from us, yes, but that's not the mission. The mission is for that dog, for example, who came to my daughter, she said, if I was a big dog, never you would adopt me. Never, even as a baby, you would turn your eyes on me. Yeah. Which was true because my daughter was crazy about the teeny chihuahua, minuscule one. And my dog who died uh, one year before was a chihuahua, but a bigger one. And every time that dog was behaving, playing with a ball or whatever, you cuddled the dog, my daughter was telling me, 
you don't feel that it's him? And I was like, yeah, I think the same as you. I see him in her all the time, in all the behaviors, the way of barking, the way of moving, because my dog was really funny. She was moving in the same way. We were really shocked, you know? And then we asked, and we, we got the answer, that he came back because when she was living with me, he was more with me than her. And they had a form like, oh, mom, the dog is sleeping with you. Why is not coming to me? But that dog was dedicated to me from the day one when I rescued him. And he came, she came back because my daughter wanted a female also. This is very important. That's why it was a female. And that dog came back for my daughter to finish the unfinished business somehow. Because she was not really with my daughter when my daughter was with me. And I have another example with a mare who knew, no, sorry, it was a stallion who knew he will become a mare. That stallion was near to his moment of death, let's say like this, was approximately months, if I remember. And we were having a conversation and I was asking the horse what we can do when the moment will come because he was sick. The horse was explaining, and at some point, without me asking, he said, tell my owner that I will come back as a mayor. And I want to come back as a mayor because I want to be at the service, but I want to be a mayor for the breeding. And I was like, huh? At that moment, I didn't catch it. And I was like, for the service, breeding, being a mayor? For me, it was like, wow, hi, breeding industry, and it's like a machine, that's all I perceive. But this was my human brain thinking. And because the horse felt what I was thinking, he started to explain, he said, no, no, that's my mission. I want to help people. And I want to be breeded as much as possible to help people. And I was like, okay, fine. And I just relayed the message, yeah. Wow. Wow, there's so many examples we can give, um, so many stories. You know, when I when I was young working at the vet hospitals um, in my earlier career as a teenager and in my early 20s, um, I fell in love with the Sphinx cat. And I was very, to this day, I'm very allergic to cats, extremely allergic. And when I worked at the zoo and I'm around lions or cheetahs or any kind of feline, um, I have almost an asthmatic reaction to them. And so I was told by my guides that I needed to have a cat around because cats and dogs do different things. We talked about that a little bit in our last chat, um, but I needed to have cats around me for the nature of the work that I would be doing. And so um, I, the, a little sphinx came into the clinic when I was working and I was about 19 and I fell in love with this cat. And I was like, what? because I wasn't really, I've never been a cat person. I've always loved dogs. So I would have never thought of having a cat but this cat was loving and so cute and a different personality than any other cat I've ever seen. And I didn't have a reaction to, to this particular cat, except if I touched her and then touched my eyes, I would get really itchy and red. But aside from that, not really a reaction. And so anyways, that prompted me a few years later to get my, my first Sphinx. And he lived 10 years and he was my best friend. And, and, and now in hindsight, I, he did a lot for me. And then he passed and he told me he would come back. And about maybe three years later, he came into my consciousness again and said, I'm, I'm here. Tell me exactly where to find him. He was in a breeder in California, which is, you know, across the country from me. And he said, I'm back. And he came back as a male again in a Sphinx body. So I could continue to have Sphinx so he can continue protecting me and doing what he's doing for me. And I uh, and now I've had this one for four years. And so it's, it, they, they will, they will put themselves in the body where they know that you can handle that particular breed, whether it's a, a cat or a dog. Um, and I, that's just one example for me, but I have hundreds of, of clients that have had similar things. So I just want everyone to know our, our animals do reincarnate and they'll reincarnate as other animals. I've known cats to come back as dogs and Horses to come back and come in as a dog the next time or all over. They, they will experience different species on purpose. Um, and, and they're happy to do that. But they're really here to be our companions. Now, not talking about wildlife. That's actually completely different. 
And that's a conversation for another day um, because there are a different set of rules for that. And, and it's different. It's actually very different. Maybe we'll do a part three on the wild animal. But if we're, we're, sp we're speaking about pets right now, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the ascension period too, that was the other thing. You know, what kind of ascension symptoms are you seeing in, in the pets that you work with? Um, are you seeing them go through similar symptoms that, it, that people are going through with adjustment of density and, um, and the shifting of the planetary Schumann resonance and things? Are you seeing them have um, kind of their own ascension body symptoms? Uh, I've seen through my client. Mine here showed me some symptoms. Not the kitten. Kitten is another story because he's coming from the street. He was already traumatized. But my mama here, I call her my mama because she's big. I've seen uh, some symptoms, even in her behavior. And I was like, hmm. But she's handling quite okay. In some of my clients, I had animals who were sick again and again and again. Like they are purging something. And it's not necessarily purging something they took from the owner, can be both too. But yes, many, many people around me had animals who were really purging, not for weeks, for months. And some things that you, you, you give medicine because they go to the vet, obviously, that's the first reaction they have until they discover say, what the heck is going on here? My animal doesn't heal with medicine. And then we do a session, realigned. Okay, they start again. Just realignment. Like us, finally, it's the same. When we go like this or completely all over the place, we just need to realign and then we go back on track. And for them, it's even easier than us okay. because they have less luggage to deal with. Yeah, they don't hold on and they don't remain in emotions. You know, we could be mad at a friend for years and be angry and feel just anger. Animals don't do that. They feel anger in the moment as it passes through their body and then that's it, they're done. Or, or fear or whatever they feel in that moment. But it's very brief because they don't hold on to, to those emotions. They don't become their emotions. They just allow them to flow through, which is why they can process and transmute so easily, which is nice. I think that we're, as a, as a human species, I think we're evolving to get there, but a lot of people are not quite there yet. And that's why our, I think that's why our animals are these little balls of unconditional love that come into our life. And, and many of them are spirit guides or, or souls that we know from other lives or that are in our soul group. And they're tangible. Because a lot of people can't see their spirit guides. They know they're there. They can feel, but they didn't. They can't touch them. They can't hug them. But the animals come in as pets because they are, they can, you can touch them. You can hug them. You can feel them. And we need that as human beings because we're touchy-feely by nature. And so it's a way for them to be with us where in a way that we can feel and connect on a physical level. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Yeah, they're amazing in that sense. They have a lot of things to to teach us. If we are willing to observe, to listen, oh my God! On the spiritual level, they are already master. We are not mastering our spiritual level yet. <laughs> One day it will come, but they are much more far away than us. They have learned already many things. Yes, they don't speak the same language as us. And it's our responsibility, I would say, to learn their language, which is telepathic language, finally. And it will not serve only for animal. It will serve later on to communicate with your guides and many other beings, because they don't have only the animals. You have the fairies, the elemental level. You have the fairies, you have many, many like that with whom you can communicate. And it's a telepathic communication. Then I would say it's our duty, our responsibility to start to move on to that way to learn their own language and to observe them much more, especially like you said, they are able to let the energy flowing freely. Do not keep anger. The anger is coming now. Oh, I express it. I'm sad. I'm expressing because dogs and cats can be depressed. They are depressed. They express it directly. 
For us, no, it's, oh my God, I cannot show it. I will be judged. They will criticize me. If I show that I'm angry in public place, no, no, you don't do that. It's not polite. And it's all our programming that block us. But because of that, you're like, oh my God, they will look at me if I'm crying or they will judge me. Or if I'm shouting, that's not good because they will see I'm angry. Then you zip yourself in many different ways. You swallow again and again and again. Years later, you have a, uh, big stuff blocked yeah. here in your chest or whatever. And that's the moment when you declare disease because the organs cannot receive the energy that it needs. The flow, we call it the chi energy, doesn't circulate normally. And your organs need that because you don't say to your brain, you don't say to your liver, okay, now you release this hormones, that <laughs> hormone. <laughs> you don't say to <laughs> Okay, now they have bread coming, please digest. <laughs> they do it by themselves because they have a certain level of consciousness, but it's also fed by the, the energy around us because everything is energy. But yeah. if we continue to block in this way, we will never ascend anywhere. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think our animals really bring us out of our, our comfort zone and and they 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 help us to be less serious, you know, yeah. less rigid, um, mm -hmm. and, and not to take things so serious. You know, I have clients where they get so mad because the dog jumps on the couch or does this or that. And I'm like, your dog is trying to show you that things aren't that big of a deal. Like what happened? The dog jumped on the couch. You, you had to clean it up a little bit. Was it that bad? Like, was it that big of a deal? They're trying to tra retrain us not to take things so seriously and not everything is the end of the world. And everything is okay. It's really fine. It's not that big of a deal. And they're happy to show us that. And if they and if we don't listen, then unfortunately the next time they might do something a little bit more detrimental. And it's just all about getting our attention. And in the moment we may not recognize that, but um, they're just really trying to lighten us up a little bit, I think. Yeah, they they do exactly like children. When a child yeah. wants to get your attention in a good or in a bad way, that's still attention. Bad attention or good attention, they yeah. don't care. They want attention. And here's the same. Yeah. It's and like, are, they're, they're like, are we going to do this the easy way or are we going to do this the hard way? It's up to you. <laughs> but I will get my attention. I will yeah. get it. Yeah. Well, speaking of attention. I wonder if anything like this has happened to you before with your your pets or your your clients' pets, because um, I think that sometimes our our pets really do need our attention, and we are so busy. I mean, I'm first. That's guilty. I have three pets, but I also have three children, and I'm, I work a lot, and I'm constantly busy. And you know, I, I feel bad that maybe I'm not giving them enough attention. So sometimes they demand it, and the way they do it may be in an unconventional way, and something happened to me a few weeks ago that was really frustrating and really uh, emotional for me for, for about a four day period. Um, but I realized in hindsight afterwards that it was a lesson for me, not really a lesson, more of a, an opportunity for me to give them more love because my husband and two of the three children went back to, to Maryland where we previously lived for about five days to go on a quick trip back, back to their, um, to see some friends and things like that. I couldn't go because I was gonna stay, oh, I was gonna take care of the pet and my older son uh, didn't really wanna go. So he kind of stayed with me. So I take my family to the airport about 25 minutes from my house. That's all the time that passed. So the time it took me to go to the airport and come back on the first day that mind you, I thought I was gonna have five days of like this major relaxation period I'm going to read a book. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to have all this time because I'm not going to have the two young kids. Well, the second I walked in my home, there was blood all over the kitchen, everywhere. And I'm looking at the dogs trying to figure out what happened, where I'm checking their mouth, their feet, nothing. My son notices because he's home, but he didn't. He was upstairs. He said, there's blood all over the cat tree. So I'm now I'm desperately looking for my cat. And I find him. And what happened, long story short, I'll keep it short, is he ended up crawling under the counter in the kitchen and there was a nail and he impaled himself on the belly with this nail. But I didn't know what he impaled himself on initially because we didn't even think of looking under there because we didn't see that there was a hole. So long story short, for two straight days, I am nursing him back to health. I took him to the emergency hospital for th three hours, cost me hundreds of dollars. They wrapped him up in these and I had to take care of him for days, snuggling with him, holding him, making sure the bandage didn't fall off, 
reattaching the bandage, giving him medicine, all this attention. He finally gets better. And I'm emotional. I'm a wreck. I'm crying because they're talking about surgery he might need if for, if the bleeding didn't, didn't stop. Oh my, and I'm an RVT. I know all of this stuff. But when it's your own pet, like rationality goes out the window. You forget everything you know. And he gets better finally, thank goodness. And then the next, so now two days later, three days later, after he's better, the dog face swells up my Doberman. And it's really bad for two days. He is can't, like he can't, he doesn't want to eat. He's in pain. He's drooling. He's got a huge, like his whole face swelled up. I, we think it was a spider bite. But again, I had to nonstop giving Benadryl, lay, laying on the couch. He would sleep on me. I would pet him. I would do Reiki on him and the cat. And I ran these quantum biofeedback machines on them nonstop. I mean, I was basically nurse across for like four days straight to these animals. I didn't get to do anything else really. And I'm like, what the heck, man? I thought I was going to have this nice weekend of, of no, no kids. And what was that about after they were better? And I got this overwhelming message. Hey, your pet, we needed you. And we, we needed some one-on-one on one time with you. And we needed some some extra attention and we had to get your attention some way. And I'm like, man, I wish it didn't cost me so much money at the vet, but you know, I got it. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, it is what it is. And and they both told me it could have been worse. Like the the injury at the end of the day with the cat wasn't that bad. It could have been 10 times worse. The dog, it could have been way worse than it was. Um, But they were, so they were ultimately fine, but just enough happened so that I would dedicate all my time to them because that's what they needed in those few days. Uh, so have you ever had anything like that happen to you? Exactly like children. <laughs> um, with my dog uh, years ago, because he passed away, I had some reaction like that, but it was always mild, I would say. Mild, nice, not like this. But here was my new kitten that I rescued in January, that one is a very attention seeker. Of course, is a baby, it's normal, but like I explained to you before we, we came on the camera, that boy is different than any other cat I had because others were always nice. I cannot give the attention now, they can wait, you get the point. That one, no. He will make noise like crazy and he will wake up the neighborhood when he needs attention. Until at some point, I break a cable in my head and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. You get the point? And this is not always easy for people to deal with because they behave, not all animals. Again, they have the character, they have the uniqueness, but some animals are really behaving like your children. You, you have a toddler at home. It's not a cat, it's not a dog, you have a toddler. And that's what is happening for the moment with that one. With others, I, I didn't have so big things like, like you explained in your case to get attention, yeah. Only my kitten who's scratching the door and passing his paw like this under the door, you know, like say, hey, I'm here and meowing. Oh my God, I think my neighbor has been waking up, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, our animals right now, they're taking on a lot for us. They're trying to guide us as much as possible. They're trying to heal us the best they can but while keeping themselves, you know, balanced as possible. They're experiencing ascension symptoms, giving them, making them feel a little off. Maybe they're sleeping a little bit more. Maybe they're not as hungry. Maybe they're super hungry for periods of time. And then that shifts. I mean, there's a variety of ascension symptoms that our dogs have. Maybe they're a little bit more thirsty for a few days. Uh, maybe they're running around in circles acting crazy because of the energy they don't know how to pro- you know they don't know what to do with it they, there's a lot of different things they're going through right now but we just have to just try to provide that space for them and let them be and and try to to help them as much as they help us and i think with that maybe we can uh, do you want to talk about light language in general first um and then what we're going to do with the light language activation mm-hmm. okay okay um- Light language is very handy uh, for animal now in terms of healing. Uh, in general, when I do session with client, I do animal communication, but always I include healing because I've noticed animal communication is a very good way. It's really helping a lot. It's acting like a therapy, but very often I want to say not every case 
I had, but very, very often, maybe 85% of the cases, the animal needs energy healing because they have an issue. Then I decided to integrate all together. And then when light language started to manifest, I'm like, well, why not? Let's go. And I started to apply light language at the same time within my session. The result has changed tremendously. Even myself, I was like, wow, this is powerful. And that's the moment I decided to do officially uh, to announce to everyone, okay, now I do a session, I will integrate light language. But well, now let's explain what is light language. <laughs> it's an energetic language that your brain is not capable to understand. When you speak light language, first of all, if you listen with your brain, it will look like gibberish. It's a language that come from the soul. We call it the soul language, the language of your soul or the language of light, if you prefer. Only when you listen with your heart, you can understand. But when I say understand, we were speaking about telepathy before, you can't understand telepathy like I say hello. It's an energetic language also, telepathy somehow. That's the language of your mind and your heart. Here, light language is the same, but it has the power to heal. I will not speak about light code today because it's rare when I receive light code for animal that I'm writing on a paper and give to, to people. It's more happening with human than for today. I will not speak about this. Light language is a healing by itself. And it has the power to bypass the body of the brain for each and every one, because when I'm speaking about light language on animal, the owner is always there. You get my point? And at the beginning, it came naturally. And I was like, I feel I need to do. I need to do whatever is happening. And with time, I started to get explanation and ask questions also to my guides, because I've been attuned to light language like this from one of my guides. I will not enter in detail now because tomorrow we are still here. But because I trust, I didn't ask so many questions at the beginning. I started to do, you know, because I felt it needs to, to be done. But later on, I started to ask questions. And when I applied light language on the animal, because the animal is capable to understand that language, they don't have the brain barrier like we have. For them, it's even more powerful than when it's applied to us. This is one thing. And second, the person who is next to the animal, most of the time they also receive, they are not aware because they are busy to watch what is the reaction of the animal when I'm applying the light language. But most of the time they absorb and they have a shift. I had one of my clients who told me that. I remember the cat was at the vet and light language came true because that cat was really deep also in this situation. My client was in front of the cat, keeping the, the phone that I can see the cat and the cat was into the nurse arms. It was a very funny situation. And the daughter who was already a teenager at that moment said, I was busy on my phone while you was doing the session with the cat, with the nurse and with Sabine. I started to feel like I'm shaking from inside. I had to put my phone on the side and just try to, to focus. And she said, every word that has been said in the light language was entering in me like you put something in my heart and you open. And I was like, that was not for the heart. But anyway, you know, because I was busy with the cat. But that person received. And that's what is also important because it serves for each and every one, finally, even if you set the intention you do on someone, the other person next to you will receive. Now, everyone can learn light language. And when I say learning, it's not a good word. It's not even learning. It's remembering. Because the light language is the language of the soul. It's because now we are into a human body. We have many limitations densities and everything. But if you are able to realign yourself, this is the most important things for everyone, realign. When you are aligned, you can start to remember 
who you really are, first of all, and you can remember the light language. They have different type of light language. Sometimes I'm channeling the light language of the animal, the light language of the client, or my light language, it depends on the situation. It's not something I decide, say, oh, today it's Monday, uh, this light, no, no, <laughs> it's not working like that. I don't even control, to be honest with you. It's in my case, not everyone is the same. Huh? Some people will tell you, okay, I set the intention, I do this, 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 and I know it's coming from uh, the Liran's being, or it's coming from the Arcturians, for example, and they work only with one group of people. That's not my case. I had different type of being coming through me, speaking light language. I had also dolphin uh, one day. I had, yes, the Liran. I had the avians, the blue avians. I had the Arcturians. I had many different ones. And that even myself, when I listen after, I say, oh, this is new. I never heard that one. That's how it works for me, but that's not the case for everyone, yeah. And it will be unique to every person also. My light language can sound that way. Your light language will sound completely different, even if you channel the same being as me. It's like Chinese, English, French. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. I'm exaggerating. It's not that level, but yeah, yeah. it's much more <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It's Everybody does it their own way. And that's that's the, the way for them because it's, it's your soul speaking through. And so what what are we doing today? It's, is this a is this an activation for the people watching to help them co connect with their animals or it's a it's a healing? What what can we tell them? I don't know. Wait. I think it will be an activation, but I want to make sure. Okay. Oh both. Okay. Um what I'm receiving right now. I hope my voice will change while I will do it because it will be difficult. <laughs> but anyway, um, attune people somehow, and even I don't like the word attunement, but that's how human understand words. Attunement has a meaning for people on hers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say remembering how to communicate with animal. Open the channel for that with light language. I prefer to say this way because attune is like oh, big, <laughs> big stuff. Like I will be attune, you will not be. I heard many stories like that. Then I prefer to say, just remember how to connect with animal. Remember how to open your channel. And because light language is healing by itself, just set the intention to receive the energy you need to be able to open your heart enough to receive the messages from the animal and to open your mind and to clear all the channel that needs to be cleared because sometimes we have few channel that has been blocked for whatever reason we decide sometimes to block our third eye. We always have a good reason to do what we do. Now, the reason behind, I will not enter in detail and explain that today. And they have sometimes blockages because of trauma. Either it's childhood trauma or any form of trauma and can be also something coming from past life. I had some of my clients Oh, I want to make a bracket here because um, before I start the light language, for people knowing, with light language, you will feel a difference, but it will not, if, and this is what I want to emphasize now, if you have a big blockage from past life and you have made a vow or you have a contract that, no, not this life, I will not do that, you will have to go back in time to find out what was going on, why this happened, why you have made that vow. Let's take an example of one of my clients who is a psychic medium and refuse to do anything on the soul level. She's very powerful, but because she misused her power in the past in many, many lives, 
she decided to close everything and she made the promise that never again I will be in that field. Then that person is incapable today, not because any forces or blockage are around. No, no, it's her only on the soul level who created that for her own protection to make sure that never again she will misuse that and make people suffer with the talent and the power she had. This is why I wanted to make a bracket here. If in your case, you feel you are totally blocked and nothing can unlock you, you need to search on that way, honestly. Uh, either is a big trauma in this life because we can do amnesia also from trauma then light language will open, but it will not open completely. You will not have a big difference. Because I know people still have expectation. We said don't have expectation, but we all have. That's why I'm explaining this way. And if it's linked to past life, like I gave the example, better to address that. Yes. Okay, let's start. Great explanation. Thank you for explaining that to everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and you go ahead and start whenever you want. I'm going to mute myself and minimize myself and, um, and then we'll get started so we don't have any background noise. Okay. この Unaya sani mi kena o koma ni kiete saya na o sani kini matu kono e na yana mi nyesa no mokoni yana masaya na kieto kona e te amai o sono kiena ma e tasi ni mi kieto tukoni a ya sa ai ko a na yana mi nyesa yana me koni tsai ke o kani mata kiena katosu kono mai na kani e toto mai kini asi. Oh, sani me kana ya tani me kena ka sono koni e ka tukutu kutu 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 na mai ana sa ya na maku kati ni maku kani ma taku kani ma si ya ta kari ni a uko ane ma kena so kani me ni a a soni ka a na mai ya tia sa tia sa tutu so ma ka ni ta kutu so na ma na ya na ma kena sa ya kani ma ku tutu ni me kia ta ya kani me tia ka o ta ni me ya ka o soni ya kani me ya ko na sa ya ni kia e te kama ya Ukoni iti kana makasi ata katia katia kuto suna mai ata kani me katia kete. No koni ana ma kani se kiti kiti kete kuma tia ne kati sa ti 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 kuma ya na tsa ya ne kie o suna kie ata na ma kie na katia tu kuto ti ni ma kuto kuto na ti kata te kuto kuma ya ne katia kana ne ma kacha kuto kuto ni kati ati kati kuma ya na ya na tsa ya ne kie ma o koni te. Oh, na kana sign, na makani e koto to na ma sign e kie na koso na kie ni ma katie kat so na katie na ma e da i ne a e o no so ni kie na ma kie na o ko ni a na ma kie sa no ko ni na ma e ta sa ni kie ta kom a e ta kani e sa o no kani e ta kama ma e sa kani e ta ko kom ma e na e sa e ti ni ma e ka o ko ni ma ni a ta o ko ma e ni se. No, you know, see, na kani me kan, sa ni kataku, kani me ni a ato, kani ni kisai, kunu ma ka, ni a kat mini ka suk ni kiti, kena ma ka o kats nai kiti, o ma aeta e ka, na ma ki na kons ni me ki ataya na ma kuchi kiti kiti ne ko, na ya na kisai, ni me ki ano ko o ma, e kiti ni kisai ni ki na ma ko ni e ki na a. No, you know, come a sign, Nikki, take a name, Nikki, the son of a ticket to go to go to Kanai, and a sahi ticket, Nike, no, no, my hati. Asa, Tani meti at a sukun, and you meti can, yet he can, and my can yet the key and the mako, so Nikki, Tiena, ah, no, Konama, eta, ee, so, Tonamakiana, ah, or so ni heta, and my key and a sukun, and a taki and a tiana maka. Open your heart, just 
feel the energy entering into your heart. I didn't say before because the light language was coming automatically and uh, I prefer to let it be. But I was receiving message at the same time and my guides were saying, open your heart because they have light code embedded in it that will be like embedded in your own heart if i can say this way again always my problem is i receive everything as energy and sensation and after i cannot put the human words or the correct human words regarding what i'm receiving at that moment but the main message is open your heart because this is the best way to communicate with animal. Have a pure heart. Pure heart means no anger. We know it's difficult when we speak about anger. We mentioned many times in many different messages, don't keep it inside, release. As soon you feel the emotion, try to release. Do exactly like children are doing, like animals are doing. Release almost immediately. If you are in a situation, because now they make me feel the throat for many people who are watching or will watch later, they say you are prevented to speak because it's not the right moment or maybe the person will be offended. Uh, they say, start to write it down. Please don't keep it inside. You are eating yourself alive when you keep emotion inside you. Let the flow happening constantly. That's how animals are doing. And that's how children are doing. Observe them in a better way and open your heart. That's the key to communicate with animal, having your heart fully open, having your heart clear and pure with no anger, no resentment, no regret, no guilt. And that's the moment where you will feel when your heart is open and pure, you have no effort to make. You will understand directly what your animal wants to tell you and not only animal. Many other beings like the fairies, and even other people. You will start to communicate openly with other people too. Yeah. Wow. wow, that was beautiful. Thank you. It was not easy today because of my nose. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell. I was closing my eyes and, and listening and it was beautiful. So thank you so much, Sabine, for all of that. And, and um I really enjoyed this conversation today. I think it's valuable for us to bring this to everyone's attention because animals are such a big part of our life. And for many, it should be for all, but for many, you know, animals, our pets are our family members and are treated with such high value as they should be. And so we need to give them, um, you know, as much love and respect and, and help them help guide them right now, just as much as they are us. So is there any last words, Sabine, for today or anything else that you want to say? I mean, everything you just said, there was, it was perfect, but any last words? Thank you. Um, I would say, enjoy, enjoy your life. When I say enjoy your life, I was speaking about the heart before, but many of us have lost the capacity to enjoy, to find even joy, and nobody can give you joy. I mean, it's inside you. We always said that, but that's true, it's inside you, and it's starting by opening your heart. Many people will tell me and told me already, no, I can't open my heart because that guy or that girl or that family blah hurt me. Address it, heal it. Because after you heal, you are not afraid anymore and nobody can hurt you. You have been hurt for a very specific purpose that is difficult to understand since you are not healed yet. And to communicate with animal 
if you are not fully healed from all your past stories, emotional shock, or whatever animal will take on you. Because they are there for that. It's their mission. They want to do it to help us. And now it's our responsibility to go that way, to do a maximum. Of course, we cannot do in one day. This is impossible. Even me, it took me years to arrive at the level where I am today. And I'm not pure. I'm not holding 100% light. I'm not uh, God. <laughs> you get the point? I don't even pretend to be ascended master, blah, blah, blah. No, no, I'm far away. But every day I progress. And that's what I want to say for everyone. Never give up. Don't say, okay, I do healing for this, 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 that, and then I stop. It's a journey. All your life, you will have to work on yourself. And this is also why animals are part of our life, to show us, because they really mirror what we need to address. Observe them. Yeah, that's yes. the answer. Yes, beautiful. Thank you so much. Well. Well, thank you for joining me today and, and thank you to everybody wa for watching this. Uh, I hope you have received all of this information well and I honor each one of you watching and supporting us and, and um, I'm just so grateful for everybody. So thank you for joining in. Uh, until next time, uh, bye. Bye everybody. Thank you, Sherry. Bye-bye.